All right, welcome back to this week's edition of the Rock and Roll Ghost Podcast. We're talking with actor Amy Landecker, uh, who's on the uh, new season of Your Honor. Um, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. So this are is. Are you the, in Chicago? Yeah. Hometown. Yeah, yeah. Why? Well, um, you know, I'm sure a lot of hometown people will say this, but I remember listening to your dad on the radio. So. Yes, I guess at this point I'm offended if you don't say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's you know, and I I think you, even though I, you were primarily a theater person for the longest time, but like I knew about you, I don't remember if um, were you on like the Steve Dahl show? Uh, oh my God, when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All the time. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember him talking about at some point talking about you and i used to listen I, think to I got into that. like a fight with marcus i think that was the guy's name oh was wow like, that yeah. was way back oh yeah, yeah. that's the uh, disco fight. demolition I, days i didn't get into a fight i got i'll tell you it's interesting because i was pissed because <clears throat> here's a piece of radio history that my dad might not want me to share anymore because it's become sort of controversial but <sighs> when i was growing up what I was told, I'm not saying this is true. I don't know historically, but my dad said disco sucks on WLS radio and uh -huh. WLS did not want him to say the word sucks. So Steve Dahl heard it. This is what I was, what I, I understood, mm -hmm. took it, ran with it and became like wildly famous off of that term. And I like yelled, I went downstairs like this little, cause it was the studios were downstairs and I like yelled something like I was like eight years old or something yeah. I, like, and yelled like through the, through the glass, like my dad, my dad said it first or something like that. Anyway, yeah. Marcus, Marcus was actually very sweet to me. I don't think we fought, but it it was like, so I was getting upset about that. And that's all yeah. I remember from my childhood. From yeah. Steve. You must've picked up on your dad must've been maybe a little irritated. Uh, yeah, okay. it, it was really hard. Although now what's interesting is if you watch the Bee Gees documentary, that whole sort of movement of like destroying all that music is now seen in a very different historical. Context. Oh, yeah, it's it's <laughs> weird because I, I, I remember I, I was listening to that show way too young, probably a little younger than you are, perhaps, or maybe we're about the same age. Um, and my, you know, I've seen that revisionist history and I, I never thought thought and not to get too far, far off track here but i never thought that steve was racist in any way about it i just thought that i didn't like, think steve was i think that it, the the that movement day, might that have been comiskey turned into something that now in retrospect looks looks racist but yeah. i don't even know if that was the intent of anyone at the time it just now in in historical perspective i think it it does but i think at the time it's like the culture really was and it was more i don't even think it was like that it was anybody that was you know a sexuality thing or a color thing i think it was more that he was taking aim at white people kind of just all of a sudden acting like they're disco and and yeah you know, and i, I think, think they also genuinely was. hated the music which i yeah. to be honest with you i never respected the bgs as much as i did until after i watched that documentary because i sort of hated most of the bg's sound yeah. and then it was like oh they're geniuses it was just it was just different because it was more yeah. synthesized and we were very freaked out about that at the time you know yeah. but now that's like so common and you realize their musicianship in retrospect but anyway well, there's was, their older stuff their, the stuff that they were doing um before like, them is, is also really holds up well but yeah i agree uh, even aside from them there were so many artists that we're not the BGs that we're doing you know, in retrospect, we're doing some cool stuff, but there was like, you know, so like the Leo Sayers and, and that right, this kind stuff of that like wasn't cool, but then yeah. you're like, oh, oh. really good music. <laughs> yeah. All like right. I'll probably think Celine Dion is great in like 10 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you grow up with a that's with true. a DJ for a father that you have very passionate opinions about music. Oh yes. Yes, you do. Yes. All right. Do. Well uh our little trip down memory lane <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so you were just like in in my sphere of knowledge for some reason but i don't think i had 
I don't know. I'm like looking. I think the first thing I re- definitely remember seeing you in, and it's a personal favorite of mine, is a serious man. As the that's next like the first. Name. That's the first real thing I ever did. I had like, I mean, I'd done a couple of Law and Orders, and I had done, you know, a couple of guest stars on some TV stuff, and I think like the only movie I'd ever done. I mean, I had like, I was like, you know, had one line as a reporter or something in something or. I was, um, the, the first like movie I ever had anything really to say or do was one scene in a movie called Dan in real life. But the first yeah. movie that I actually had like a character to play, um, was definitely a serious man. And part of that was because I grew, you know, I didn't leave Chicago until pretty late. I was a theater actor and a voiceover actor and very content and a commercial actor and content to do that. I just ended up doing a play that took me to New York, that took me to LA. And while I was out in LA, which was a Tracy Letts play, who's a Chicago guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and while I was out in LA, they were doing a casting for that movie. And I just happened to know the casting director from Chicago. Her name was Rachel Tenor. And I just happened to be able to go like, hey, Rachel, I happened to be in LA. I saw this casting call, It, you know, that, someone actually sent me an email uh, that my friend, Andrew Hawks, who was a Chicago actor, he was like, Hey, Amy, I saw this casting. This is you. And I was so flattered because it said nudity was required. And I was like, ew, you, who wants to see me naked? He's like, shut up. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, I would never think of myself for that, but I was like, well, uh, and I honestly, I'm not trying to be self-deprecating, but she was described as really sexy. I didn't think of myself like that. I didn't think of myself like that at all. And here's this lovely, old boyfriend who thought this was perfect for me. And I just thought, well, I'll just go say hi to Rachel Tenor in LA. Never in a million years ever did I think I was going to get that part. It blows, it still blows my mind. I mean, I don't even, it just wasn't even in my realm of reality that I would get in a Coen Brothers movie that I would be cast as like a naked sex person. I was like, wait, what? I, it never even occurred to me. And it was so weird when she's like, you have a callback with the Cohen brothers. And I was like, <clears throat> and, and, you know, it, I don't know. It was just so weird. I, I had some take on it that they wanted and I got the job proceeded to like starve myself <laughs> you oh, know, and like work out every day and try to like feel confident. Although I was lying down, it was no big deal, but um, and I, that had nothing to do with why they were casting me. That was all, you know, but of course I would, that's the only part I was so scared of, but, right. um, but it was so fun, you know, I, as, and I, sorry to talk so much, but it's no, just, no, no, yeah, that's, it always you're, strikes on, here, me. you're on here to talk. So <laughs> that, Well, just that Michael Stuhlbarg and I, you know, we've gone on a journey together. We, that was his first big movie and mm-hmm. we became extremely good friends, um, during the shooting of that. And, he ended up, we ended up, um, you know, it just looking at your honor behind you. It's just, yeah. we talk about it all the time. We were just together. Um, oh, shooting. that's right. I, I, for, yes. I completely forget that he's on it. Oh yeah. 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 I, I, I haven't watched a ton of it yet. I, I was waiting. Um, I was waiting to see if there was going to be a second season. And then once I heard there was one, right, you like to watch it all together. I mm-hmm. kind of wanted to, you know, make sure that like, it didn't tell half of a story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it was intended to be an. Uh, it was intended to be a limited series, so it does hold up as its own. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have been like, "How do you even go on from that?" But they did. Yeah. Hopefully, people will enjoy where it did. But Michael and I, you no, know, Michael and I have done four projects. We did that, and then we both got cast in um, a Mar- Doctor Strange, which I am unrec. You wouldn't even know I was in it. Oh, and- well, the first one. Uh, yeah. And I okay. didn't know why they hired me because you wouldn't know I was in it. I was in medical garb. And it turns out the whole reason I was in it is because the director loved a serious man and wanted me and Michael in the same scene. And Michael oh. was a surgeon and I was a, I, I was an anesthesiologist. So yeah, Scott Derrickson, right? Yeah, yeah. He it's his favorite movie, it's his favorite scene in films or something. That scene wow, with me. That's, me that's and, a- I know it's a pretty, pretty. I mean, they paid a pretty penny to bring me as basically background to come out to London for a month. Yeah. I was like, anyone could have done this. Why am I here? It's, it's a shame you weren't up for the uh, lead role. You could have got some some good Marvel money. Uh, yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Um, and then we did, he came on Transparent, which was my big break in TV. And right. then 
Um, and then now we do your honor together. So all roads, I always say lead back to a serious man, but it changed my whole, I was definitely not, I was not a main, mainly on camera actor. And I certainly thought that those years were probably more behind me than in front of me. Um, but I, my, I'm the weird, you know, actress who started a career, really an on-camera career at the, at like the age of 40, which is like usually when people are sent out to die. Yeah, <laughs> so I, yeah. I had this weird uh, career turn where not only did I start doing on camera, but I started doing comedy, which was, I was never associated with um, because of that. And that just kind of uh, led to, you know, a bunch of cool stuff. But the first time I met Brian, how I, which is how I got your honor was Sneaky Pete, which mm-hmm. was sort of the bridge between comedy and drama, I would say. Of- yeah, that was... Uh- something that brian produced yeah right? he produced it he was in the first season and i did like a recurring and um and we had a really nice he, he's been supportive of me which is nice <laughs> yeah no it's cool and you're in you got this show now yeah. um yeah a serious man is is uh you know it's weird when you think of somebody like the Coen brothers or scorsese or anybody like that who's done a ton of films and like you you know the big ones like you know um one of my I'm trying to pick a Coen Brothers movie out of the thin air for some reason, like Big Lebowski or something like that. Fargo, you know, Fargo, yeah. right? Those yeah, are the yeah. ones that get mentioned. Like, nobody really yeah. talks about, like, you know, a man, a serious man, or say Inside Lou and da- Davis or something yeah. like that. These are, they're more offbeat stuff. But yeah, I saw, I think I saw a serious man with my son, and I remember just I don't know why, but I just took to it instantly, and it's got this. It, that scene with Michael yelling at the guy from Columbia House about Santana's Abraxas. St- it, it, my son even get, bought me a vinyl copy of Santana's Abraxas. Oh my God, that's hysterical. As a gag. <laughs> that's hysterical. No, it's so, that movie holds up so well. My husband had not seen it and watched it during COVID. And he was just like, because no, a lot of people haven't seen it. A lot of people haven't heard of it. It's Luckily for me, career-wise, it's certainly beloved amongst filmmakers. And right. That's the key movies. thing for acting. Yes, I, I got plenty from it um, because people were so into it. It's, you know, it's a brilliant movie. Yeah. It's just very small and weird. And it doesn't, you know, they they have those, they have like two genres, the Coen brothers. They have like their big, you know, kind of lots of action and these really weird little psychodramas. And this yeah. is definitely one of the weirder ones, but but yeah, when he's trying to argue with that guy and I mean, it's just, it's, it, it's that type of stuff where the first time you might think it's funny, but it gets funnier and funnier and funnier yeah. the more you watch it. Yeah. Well, you have that, you, your character is married to the idiot, uh, the hunting idiot, right? With the, no, the, no, the, I'm his neighbor. I'm oh, his I thought neighbor. that was the one. I thought you were. Married no, no. To the, oh, that's the other. That's I don't the think other so. name. That's the other. Yeah, name. I don't. I never saw my husband. I just know my husband's never home. But the hunting okay. guy with that kid. Uh, I I see. I it's been a while since I seen the movie, so I'm I'm transposing people. That's all right. We're next door neighbors. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not my husband. Yeah, yeah. Thank and God. He, he he's up on the roof. That's when he catches you. In, in, right. He's in, trying to the fix pool. the antenna. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sunbathing nude, and I remember being so self conscious about being naked I was so freaked out about it and uh you know we finished the scene and and I said to Ethan Cohen I was like how, how did that look he goes oh it's so funny it was so funny yeah. and I remember being like funny yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like all I wanted to hear was like you look great but it was yeah, so yeah. now in retrospect what a sweet innocent beautiful thing to say to an actor instead of yeah, like yeah you know yeah right it's a, yeah some mirroring jerk yeah yeah exactly it was like no it was really funny yeah. And, and so I, yeah, it was, I just confirmed uh serious man trivia through Jean Black, who is my makeup artist, who's brought, who's Brad Pitt's personal makeup artist. Oh, wow. So Julia Roberts, personal makeup artist. So I was actually working with Julia Roberts very briefly on a show called Gaslit and, oh. uh, and Jean was there and goes like, Amy Landacker, what do you? what are you doing? Oh my God. And Julie's like, how do you know each other? And she's like, we did a serious man together, like, you know, a thousand years ago. Yeah. And I said, I'm surprised you remember me. She's like, oh, of course I remember. Like, 
I mean, it was, you know, such a great character, but also like the most makeup she ever got to put on a woman in a Coen Brothers movie. Cause I had like all these, this very like big black eyeliner and a really, yeah, yeah. Tan. anyway, I asked her, is it true that my Merkin, which is a wig for the Cubis, as yes. I know, <laughs> what, what, was it made from Brad Pitt's beard from another film? And oh in God. fact, it was, it, to confirm. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, that's bizarre and hilarious at the same time. And I was like, damn, I should have saved it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, at least it wasn't his Merkin. You know, they offered me to save it. And I thought, oh, that's disgusting. Why would I save it's it? It's a little I, weird, yeah. It's a little I would weird. kill for it now, though. Yeah, I would you would have had his DNA. And I would have this ridiculous, ridiculous memory. It would be like on a, just like sitting on some sort of thing inside a glass display case. Trying to explain. Yeah, this is what I wore to cover up. <laughs> this is my costume. I wore Brad Pitt's beard. <laughs> I am Brad Pitt's beard. Oh man, that's funny. Um, well, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I love that movie, and I, I noticed that you're, uh, you're in a, that movie Missing. That's coming oh, yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I didn't even know about till today. Uh, what can you tell me about that? Well, I didn't know a lot about a movie called Searching, which was, right. I guess big hit for um it was at Sundance and uh -huh. engrossed quite a bit of money and was really cool and creative it's all this found footage stuff and um and so you know I had never I I had never um seen it or heard of it but my agent said that I was getting this offer to do the sequel that was originally called um suit like uh uh, what did I? What was the first one? <laughs> searching. searching, searching, searching. So the sequel is going to be searching to electric boogaloo. It, right. It was going to be searching too. <laughs> um, and then I think they realized that even though searching one was a hit, it's maybe not the. I don't know. I don't know why they changed the name, but now yeah. it's called Missing, and it's um, same idea where you have this. Uh, and I'd done another found footage movie a long time ago. I forget the name of it, but that was like somewhat successful at it, but searching was really smart. Like you actually got really into it and, and, yeah. and it was, it worked even though there was only through like cell phones and, and security cameras and FaceTime. And so it's like, a, it's a definite sort of, you know, like tricky, whatever that word is when you have like a, a, a gimmicky kind of idea if it's not done right. But I feel like these guys really know how to do this. And it's just a murder mystery, basically done through found footage. And Storm Reed is the lead, and I am her mom's. Nia Long plays her mom. Her mom is missing, and I am her mom's best friend. So, okay. yeah. What's okay. also cool about that, though, is Tim Griffin, who's a Chicago actor, um, is in it as well. And him and I went to Francis W. Parker High School, which is a very small school in Lincoln Park of Chicago. And we passed each other in the hall at the fittings. And I was like, Tim, what are you doing here? He's like, I'm in this movie. I was like, I'm in this movie too. <laughs> so we had a little high school reunion. So that's that's cool. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen it yet. The premiere's on Thursday. I'm going to go here in LA. Oh, nice. Nice. Do you know, are there a lot of people from, from that you knew from here uh, out that way? I mean, where? Yes. A lot of, I mean, my class alone, we just had a huge loss and H was in our class. Um, we oh, were all okay. we were a class of like 60 kids and four of us were actors out here in LA and um, all making a living, which is, you know, in and of itself in, impossible. Yeah, um, right. But Paul Edelstein, Tim Griffin and Ann and I were all in the same grade. Um, oh, and wow. then, yeah, I know it was, it was, we're all still kind of freaked out and devastated. Don't really, it's just kind of, it's surreal to me. Um, I did a ton of theater with her in high school and um, we all did and, um, and kept in touch through the years and um, just didn't, it just didn't expect that at all. Um, but, um, but yeah, we had Billy Zane was at our school. Um, Gene Siskel, the great film critic came and interviewed our theater class because we were not a performing arts school we had Daryl Hannah, Jennifer Beals, uh, uh, David Mamet, 
um, we, the, 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 they, they, he came out to interview because he was trying to figure out like why this little school in the middle right. of Chicago that wasn't even performing arts was turning out all these actors. We don't really know. It was just yeah. sort of weird. Something in the water. I mean, they had a really good theater department and we were near Steppenwolf Theater, which was a great ground. I mean, I, I start, that's where I got introduced to like the idea of theater acting, which I did for a very long time. And that was like my passion. And that was definitely watching, you know, Rondi Reed and William Peterson doing Fool for Love in, at Steppenwolf blew my mind. You know, Sam Shepard started a theater company with my sister. Paul was in a theater company, you know, the, we, we were, we, I, Chicago actors take theater very, very seriously. And if you are a really good theater actor, you can transfer that like a lot of people come out here they don't know what they're doing you know so Paul would always say to me like talent will get you somewhere in LA because a lot of people don't I mean not that I'm like saying I'm not talented but just that you even like really care about it and have done it and have worked at your craft in any way a lot of people just come out because they just like kind of want to be famous which is fine it's just that that's it's so much harder than just that you know unless yeah. you're Kim Kardashian <laughs> yeah. so yeah no, I, I that's it's pretty cool, actually, that there were uh, some. I didn't realize that all those people were from the yeah, same school. That's weird. Really neat. Yeah, yeah, we talk about it a lot, and that's why when Tim and I were in the same movie, all those years yeah. later, um, it was wild. We had our high school reunion like two months after in Chicago, and we were there, and it was just like it's just who you can't write that. It's just very weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the main reason for talking to you today is Your Honor, where uh, you star in it with Brian Cranston and Michael Stuhlbarg. Uh, what what led you to this role? I, you know, it's funny. I'd come off of Transparent, which was like a really comedy, more more comedy. I mean, it had dramatic elements, but it was, you know, this wild character, um, you know, who was like super you know, I was always high and sort of sexually curious and I was, I didn't want to get typecast. I mean, people, people really believe you are what you play. I mean, people would come up and say the most inappropriate stuff to me if they were drunk. I was like, no, I'm just like a mom from, you know, Pasadena. I'm not Sarah Pfefferman. Yeah. Uh, and so when I got offered this show, I was just really um, interested in taking a 180 um, on on a series where, you know, I could show a totally different side of myself. And it, it was so cool because I was like working in the background one day for a, quite a while. I mean, we were, she was like next to me in this scene in the courthouse and, you know, I have my hair in a ponytail and I'm very sort of like un, not done up and very straight forward. And, um, you know, somehow she was like, why do you look so familiar? And I was like, I don't know. I was on the show Transparent. She's like, I watched Transparent. What were you in Transparent? I was like, I was Sarah, the dog. She was just like, couldn't believe it. Like, she was like, I can't believe it was the same person. And I was like, good, that's good. <laughs> that's what I want. Yeah. Um, so that was one element of it. I had watched like some really great FBI stuff with Olivia Coleman on, in, on, um, an English show. Um, I feel like it was called Broad Church. And then um that sounds I, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I just got interested in the idea of like doing an FBI person that wasn't done in the vein of like law and order, like in a really arty kind of cool, complex sort of show. And I knew with Brian, I the other thing, of course, is Brian, who is I just think. I, to say, I, I, you know, I, he truly is, he's just one of the best actors I'll ever work with in my life. I have no doubt about it. And, um, you know, it was such a thrill to think that I would be in his presence. And it was Michael Stuhlbarg and Hope Davis, you know, Isaiah Whitlock. I mean, there was the first year yeah. cast, uh, Margot Martindale. It was insane. Yeah. And, um, so, and I, and it was shooting in New Orleans, which just sounded like a blast. I never. Oh yeah. I, no, I, I, oh I would, if I were an actor, I would definitely take a role in New Orleans. It was the greatest know. city I've ever worked in. I got to do a movie there like the year before this called Project Power. So I got to spend like the last three years in New Orleans for at least nice. a month a year. And I just, it was unbelievable. But um, yeah, so basically, and also the director of the, um, of the pilot, I did not know his work. I was, um, you know, basically the director of a pi of the first episode 
um, of a television series sets the tone for the whole season. So they're, right. they're very much the auteur of the mood of the show. And my agent was like, you need to work with this guy. He's really hot. His name is Ed Berger. And I was like, oh, okay. I'll, you know, and it was so funny because my husband and I were just watching All Quiet on the Western Front, the new one. And it is like mind blowingly brilliant. And I'm like, who directed this? And it was Ed Berger. And I was like, oh, oh. my. Yeah. Like he's, he, that first episode of season one, if you only watch one, I'm not, I don't even think I'm in it. I don't think I'm in the, I come in in the second one, but it is like one of the coolest sequences. There's a hit and run and yeah. It, just so well shot so cool so like moody interesting um so that was the appeal and that it was a limited series so you know if you're not happy you can move on <laughs> you right, know right. um so uh but then by the time we were done with season one we were all hoping brian would do more if they wanted us to which there was a lot of buzz on the on the set that they did showtime was really happy with it and that if if in fact they could get him to come back, they'd probably want to do more. But it was it was always up to whether Brian um, felt like doing more and if they could come up with a storyline that he felt like was worth coming back for. So that took a couple of years. He was very busy. He was doing, you know, a thousand things. And um, I mean, in the meantime, I did a pilot and a couple of movies. I didn't even know if it was for sure going to happen again. And then last july they said we're a go we have scripts we have brian do you want to come back um i'm in seven out of ten so i'm not in every episode but um and i was like yeah i'd love to fin i'd love to see what happens next and then this yeah. year they brought in rosie perez as oh, a nice. sort of my kind of my superior uh she's a she's like uh comes from the outside and really stirs things up and um she's a real hero of mine uh, growing up fearless is one of my favorite movies and her performance in it is one of the best things I've ever seen so I was very hard hard to be normal for a while around her but I did get yeah. comfortable uh, but yeah she's a great addition to this season that's about to come up out in Jan the, now, this month. The, yeah the it's gonna come out uh on streaming the 13th and then it's gonna be on Showtime like the channel itself on the 15th oh wow yeah. that's it yeah um well yeah you were mentioning the first episode and I, I think that first episode is maybe one of the best first episodes i i was blown away yeah I mean, that, that, that whole episode could have just been its own thing quite honestly yeah. we it, watched it we it was covid when it came out so the premiere was on zoom like this and none of us had seen it but we went to like a zoom premiere we watched it just on our computers and i was just like what you know and you're in something you have you don't have any idea how it's going to get edited what the music's going to be like what the tone is going to feel like like you have a sense somewhat of like camera angles might be more unusual than normal so that's kind of cool like it's not all just like but you don't you don't really know until you see it all put together and we were just all like gobsmacked I was like uh, uh you know and I knew I knew what happened in season one and I watched it. I also don't usually watch anything I'm in, but because it was COVID and there was nothing to do, <laughs> like we were all, this is like early days, you know, just everyone's quarantined. So we were, I had a group of friends and we'd watch it every week that it came out and I would be completely tense and shocked as if I didn't know exactly what was going to happen. Right. That's how well done it was. I was just like, I'd get sick to my stomach. I mean, it's not for everybody. My husband's on handmaids. It's, that's not for everybody either. Like right. it's definitely an emotion. You will feel shit that you might not want to feel, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 No, I get you. That, that it's, uh, it's, I haven't gotten, uh, I haven't gotten very far with it, so I'm. All right, either, I won't tell you what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get you. I, mean, I don't want to ruin it for anybody else because, you know, it, it, people have the ability now to see. I know, you uh, can never tell, you can never spoil anything because people, I didn't, I didn't watch Breaking Bad till it was all done and I watched right. all six years at once. I watched all of Better Call Saul all at once. I sort of like to wait and do it all as a long story. I hate waiting like a year between stuff, but. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I more of this, so I would go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll I'll get it. I'll I'll tell the the, the silly story that. Okay. Um, so, um, my mom, at some point, remarried, and her new husband, who I you know called dad, still regardless, even though 
they got married when I was an adult. Um, she she was saying like, oh well, he he she was over uh, talking to uh, you know I was talking with her and my sister, and she's like trying to describe what my stepdad George looks like, and she goes, you know, she look he looks like that guy Brian Whitmer, and I'm like <laughs> Brian Whitmer. I mean, is he a is that a football player? He's like, no, no, he's an actor. I'm like. Who the hell is Brian Whitmer? <laughs> and I, I, you know, I just put it Brian Whitmer in the Google, and for some reason, Bradley Whitford's name came oh, up, and I don't know how. I'm like, do you just, mean Bradley it knew, you, it knew you had it wrong, and it yeah, knew. You, I'm like, do you mean Bradley Whitford? She goes, Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Where the hell did you get Brian Whitmer from? <laughs> Well, I know what I'm going to call him tonight. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, so I said thanks, and I, I, and I'm going to admit to something. I'm going to admit to something to you, and you, I don't know if you want to tell him this too, but he was one of those people. Like when he was kind of starting out in the '90s, and he was in the Adam Sandler movies and stuff like that. Yeah. He was always a guy that I every time I saw him on screen, I was like, "Oh, I hate that guy." <laughs> I absolutely, he always plays an asshole i'm sure and i'm saying he plays it so well he's gotta be an asshole in real life <laughs> and uh i think what turned me around is even though it didn't last very long and i didn't even watch all of the episodes that it was on uh because i know he was in the west wing but he was on that uh circuit show studio on right studio 60 studio, yeah 60 and I liked that show enough and I liked him in it that I'm like, okay, I'm going to start reconsidering. And I absolutely love him on hands, wow. Handmaid's Tale. So I've come, I've come around. Well, if it's any, you know, consul <laughs> you know, uh, not consolation, I guess. I, I thought he was a dick when I met him because because <laughs> <laughs> he's got a swagger, which is yeah. why he's cast as that a lot. He has a way of walking and a way of talking that yeah. we that we sort of associate with a cocky, self-assured kind of jerk, which is yeah. why it's cast as that a lot. He is the most kind, lovely, and I'm not saying that because I'm married to him. I, I, <laughs> well, I, would, not, I would hope that's part of it. I could not be, I could not have been more wrong. Like it was so funny. I thought, oh, my whole life, my, my I was like, I would, I had like the one that is the one for me was the one where I had the wrong impression. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, it was like, oh, don't, don't trust your first instincts. Like, yeah, yeah. because I met him on set and I was like, on, he was on transparent. That's how we met. And I was like, yeah. whatever, Bradley Whitford, you know? Like, <laughs> and then I, he's the biggest hearted sap. He cries at the drop of a hat. I mean, he's yeah. just, um, and no, he never really gets cast. We, but I, by the way, I play a lot of jerky people too. And I, I, I'm not saying I'm like an angel, but I, 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 it is interesting. Jay Duplass, who was my brother on Transparent, yeah. played a jerk. And he was, he has literally, he'd say in interviews, I slept with more women on that show than I have. I mean, just in the storyline than I have in my entire life. Like people right. just, he was like a womanizer, such a sweetheart. I actually think it's kind of like has nothing to do with it, but I think you just, you know your manner your i don't know i mean i don't it's well, that's I, where typecasting becomes a problem sometimes yes yes yeah, yeah I, re I remember right. hating philip yeah. seymour hoffman mainly because I, I hated philip seymour hoffman because of son of a woman and i had it hated matt damon for like geronimo school ties and courage under fire because i thought he played he was just a jerk and all he, three. he definitely is one of those guys that comes off as a dick like yeah. matt damon yeah oh yeah i mean not i don't know in real i'm sure he's oh, great, oh gotcha. no i mean his mannerisms like yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. got that you know it's, it was just the, like the early version but i've since, like I, toxic, I've since grown to like it it's like toxic masculinity energy you know just yeah like, it's oh, weird it, it's a weird thing it's just a it's just a vibe it doesn't mean right anything. it's a vibe or sometimes it's, the sometimes the coolest seeming people are complete assholes too. uh yes and i won't <laughs> name anyone but let me tell you i <laughs> that's what blows blows my mind people yeah. whose entire careers are built on playing people you love can be some of the most horrible people it's yeah. really weird. And, and and not to throw throw somebody under the bus but i mean i 
I never realized until recently how bad of a, I mean, I knew the whole situation with community, but I never knew how bad of, uh, of an impression he Chevy Chase left on. Oh people. my God, he's supposed to be horrible. I don't that know. The, your, the Christmas vacation movie apparently was supposed to be a fucking nightmare. Oh my God. And, and Bill Murray. I mean, Bill, yeah, Murray, Bill Murray's gotten into a weird area all of a sudden. No, he's always been the worst and yeah. no one talked about it. And he's one of the funniest people on the planet. And you would yeah. never think that guy. I mean, you just would not think what a jerk that guy is. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, it just blows your mind. Yeah. You're like, wait, what? Like, you're funny and I love you. No. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it, it it didn't. It, his his Bill Murray's mystique also got helped a lot by him just showing up at random places and like doing dishes at a frat. Right, party. and there, I mean, and, and honestly, it's we're all more complicated than just one thing. Like he does right. do some cool stuff, and he was such a great like Cubs fan, right? Yeah. He, I mean, he's a there's cool parts to him, but it's and, hard for me to hate a Chicago. One. You know, I agree, that, that, but in yeah. terms of working with him, I, I never did. I have friends who did. It's just a nightmare, an absolute yeah. nightmare, and it's just funny. It's like, okay. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mean, you know, he's he's winding down anyway, so it's not yes. like a, a big yes. deal. But um, for sure, <laughs> God, I I forgot if there was something else I wanted to ask you. Still gonna love him. I don't care if he's. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I have that unless somebody's done. Something right, unless they've totally, done something right, unless they're like truly really horrible. I right. mean, <laughs> like, I mean, I, I never oh, liked it. I tried to watch a Kevin Spacey movie the other night, and I couldn't do it. Like, it's I hard. Know. It's I, that's I, I a hard can't. one for me. And he because, just got like acquitted on something in England, yeah. but there was like far too many accusations. I know someone yeah. that he like. I just don't trust any of it, and now he creeps me out. Oh, that one was that one was one of the hardest because I had been championing Kevin Spacey since Wise Guy. Oh, he's so good. And it was so, he's so, so good. horrifying. It's like, I mean, I, I always hear, heard the rumors that he was gay. And I was like, oh, whatever. Everybody says right, who that. cares? But who not cares if he is. Prey on people. But not, there was nothing about all of what else was going on. Yeah. I mean, I it's just, it's you horrifying. And, it, <laughs> and it's weird that in the Me Too movement that there were gay men that were swept up into it too, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, it's sure. it's weird. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen um the new Kate Blanchett movie Tar? I just did. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Oh my god. I mean Bradley said in the middle of it, like, I quit. I quit acting. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. She's she's so good. You're like, what I, what I don't even do anything. Like what every yeah, every best every best acting job this year have been for me, women right? Women. It's been uh Kate in uh yeah. Tar. Uh, Anna de Armas in Blonde and, and Amber Mid Thunder in, in Prey, the oddly enough, a Predator sequel. Oh, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> yeah, it's really I love cool. Anna very much. Um, my husband worked with her and she's like, I can't watch that movie. And I love Julianne Nicholson who's in it, but I, I, I can't watch it. I just like it freaks me out. It's too, like, too much. Yeah, too dark. Too dark. I can't do it. <laughs> it's pretty dark. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Um, and I love both of them and you know and I feel bad because I know she kind of got swept up in stuff that had nothing to do with her performance because yeah came, I don't think was the character uh, she played her mother right yes yeah yeah that's cool that's right yeah um I swear I know I've seen Julian uh she's a great actress with, she's with no I've seen her with with Bradley before though oh really somewhere but I can't I thought they did something together for some reason that's like sticking out in my head but I huh. I can't maybe not I don't know I don't know we I she did uh that Kate Winslet Winslet right yeah uh, Mayor of East Town and then she used to be on Law and Order which is maybe that's where Bradley knew her I don't know maybe um, I don't know I don't know anyway she's so my mind's all over the place I want I just want to be her in another I don't know I want her career and I want I want um Tony Collette I'd take either of those <laughs> yeah yeah Tony's with, a little, with a little, little Julia Louis Dreyfus sprinkled in <laughs> Yeah, it's it, she's uh sorry I had to put the dog down. Okay. She kept staring at me and I finally just grabbed her. Um <laughs> uh Julie Louis Dreyfus is all of a sudden gonna be part of the she's part of the Marvel universe now. I saw it's so crazy. It's like those movies though, they're not as they're great to watch, but boy, you're in the middle of like some ex army bank like hangar in somewhere in england where it's freezing and dark and it's cold and it's like and you're acting with 
green screens the whole time. It's such yeah. an interesting, it's, it's such a different experience to do than it is yeah. to watch. Like yeah. I used to be so jealous of people in those movies and now I'm like, okay, whatever. Like I, you, I'd like and them. You, but... And you only did the, the, the scenes in a, in a hospital room. Right. I, I mean, I didn't even have to do all the fake stuff. I watched my husband do Godzilla for a long time and that's hysterical. I mean, they're yeah. all locked in a ship with a f- nothing there going, oh, yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's a very yeah. strange form of acting. Yeah. Know? Yeah. For real. But it's great. Um, money. It's great. And it's great entertainment. Yeah. No, no, for sure. Um, I guess I'll, I'll, I guess I'll, because I've been talking to you for a while. So, I mean, I don't, it's not that I don't want to talk to you. It's just, I don't want to take up all your time. And, either. and I will never shut up. <laughs> well, I, I could have that problem too, but uh, you're from here, obviously from Chicago. You moved to LA at some point. Um, what do you like about living in LA and what do you miss about Chicago? Well, it's easy to say my dad sends me Giordano's pizza twice a year. So that's- Ah, uh, you're a Giordano's I am fan. a Giordano's. I know everyone's got their freaking pizza that they like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, are you Cubs or Sox? Right. So what's what yours? Are you? What's yours? For pizza? Yeah. Lou Malnati's. Oh, I love Lou Malnati's. So yeah. it's like, whatever. But I do like- Okay, Giordano's. now Cubs or Sox. But I do like Giordano's more. Um, I am a Cubs. I was raised in the North Side. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I worked I was, at Wrigley. I worked at Wrigley Field. Like what? I have to. Yeah. I grew up on the South Side, so I'm sorry. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> it's that whole thing of like, what's your pizza? But um, I miss. I love LA's weather. Obviously, yeah. there's no other reason. That, that's the whole thing. It's just yeah, like yeah. beautiful outdoors. I got very. Um, I really got over the Chicago winters. My stepdaughter moved from here to Chicago and loves it there. And I don't know, it's like your own personal thing, but my dad still lives there. I I can't, I can't do those winters anymore. Well, to be honest, the winters aren't nearly as bad anymore. Well, they're not here. I mean, our bad weather this week. I get you. It was like freaking out here. It's freezing. And and it does feel freezing for us. It's like 50 degrees and everyone's like freaking out. And um, (laughs) that's just never happens. And it was raining for three days and everyone's like, ah, um, I, I went to I, I went to my I went to my parents' house the other day. And it was like thirty nine degrees, and I was wearing a t shirt and shorts. And she goes, "Where the hell is your jacket?" Still being a mom, even at her age, and I'm like, "It's like summer out there. We need the jacket." <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, my body temperature doesn't. I'm always cold. You know, yeah. and some people are always warm, but my. But yeah, I miss I miss like pizza and I miss my dad and I miss my friends there. And I I was there till my 30s. You know, I was a real like, it was a lot big part of my life. I miss uh, Lakeshore Drive always. I loved going to Watertop Place when I was a kid. I miss, um, you know, the, the Millennial Park and the, you know, the Art Institute of Chicago. And, um, you know, and here I love. Yeah, I, I always just come up with the same thing because it's not. There's not much else to love here than the fact that it's 75. It's sunny. I, I love, there's great people here. There's a lot of expats from Chicago mm-hmm. out here. Um, there's a lot of people from New York that moved out here. There's a lot of art here, a lot of culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to see the Roots play at Disney uh, Hall on New Year's Eve. That's and cool. It was unbelievably extraordinary. And, you know, there's tons of cool stuff like that. If you're in comedy, there's great comedy shows out here. Mm-hmm. If you're and hiking and nature so that's you know we were in the desert hot springs it takes like two hours and you're on another planet in joshua tree so i i like i like the hills and the mountains um yeah but i you know i'll always consider myself a chicagoan that's we'll yeah always- no i get that I'm, I'm actually um i'm narrowing in on finally you know i've i've spent a little bit of time in 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 los angeles i was on a uh uh, a layover, a brief layover from Vegas to LAX to back to, to O'Hare one year. So that's the most I've ever spent in LA. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually planning. You need uh, to come. I'm, you do all I'm this like, entertainment trip. stuff. You need to come. To well, I'm dying to go see all the all the classic movie theaters that you guys have. I mean, you guys, right. uh, well, not to be predictable, but I really want to go to the new Beverly. Right um and I, there's a bunch of like i want to see ground you know i want to go to the chinese theater just to yeah, see yeah yeah chinese theater is cool i went and uh, saw rr there recently oh, okay with the director it was 
insane. I mean, yeah. that place is a lot of fun with the right movie. Yeah. I really wish when I go that the Cinerama Dome would be open, but I don't think that's going to be open by the time I by oh, the time yeah. when I go, because that's still in You in should also go to like Hollywood Bowl. Sometimes they show movies there and sing yeah. along. Well, I'm going to be coming in March. I don't think we'll be doing those yet. Maybe. I it's warm here. <laughs> <We're so laughs> no, I know, but I, I, you know, you, but still, again, people might still consider March cold. So I guess, know. yeah, I guess, yeah, that's <laughs> true. I guess it's probably more. Time thing. Yeah, so I want to go do that, and there, you know, um, I used to write about the food uh, business here in Chicago. So there's a ton of places. I, a couple of chefs I know have places out there now. Um, we went. We went to Odium, which is a restaurant next to the Broad the where disney is and it's a really great little nook of museums art and that restaurant is off the chain so i yeah. highly recommend adding it to your list odium okay odium with a t o-t-i-u-m oh i i haven't heard i mean i've been trying to kind of pay attention yeah oh good well i, I i'll recommend uh there's a because she's got one here now she's got one in LA is uh girl and the goat, the Stephanie Eisen. Oh, that there's one here now. I've heard yeah, about yeah. it. I never went to in Chicago, but yeah. I've heard plenty about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's you gotta check that out because that's okay. always fun. Girl and the goat. But probably impossible to get a seat there, but I'm sure I, maybe you guys could figure yeah, out a way. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> I always I always make I, the funny joke is like. Bradley's one of those actors like either people are obsessed and you get a table immediately or maybe they just somehow missed everything he was in like he's just yeah. in that weird but uh, we're always like take off your hat honey take off your hat because if he's wearing a hat it doesn't work they have to say like the whole high forehead yeah yeah that's <laughs> then, funny then you might we went to Nobu in New York and it was packed we had no reservation like there's not a chance in hell yeah and his magic worked so oh cool very sometimes. cool Something. Yeah, we got one of those in Chicago now, but I've heard it's just kind of eh. It's really good out here, but yeah, I, I'm sure, yeah, there's great sushi. In it's, it's it's hard to know because it's like we've got a lot of those sushi places now, the high-end ones here right. in Chicago, so. Right. You know, I, yeah. I have no idea. But yeah. I love, I love, in fact, I'm going to do a, a whole tasting thing at one of the Let Us Entertain You places next week, uh, which I'm very oh, excited fun. about. Uh, Richard Melman is that who is that yeah 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 I got to meet him once I I got I to go into the lettuce, lettuce thing the lettuce test kitchen too I I think I worked for that I I think I worked in Water Tower Place for a lettuce entertaining restaurant well, there's been so many D.B. Kaplan's D.B. Kaplan's which closed it was a deli with like oh. this really extensive menu and that was a lettuce entertaining oh that's been a it's been a while i remember i remember steve doll's place with with melman uh hat dance oh, right right right, and, right yeah and then gary meyer used to have the other one a couple blocks later which wasn't right. melman related but yeah it's last from the past i know i know all those all those people from well i hope you have a great then. time out here and yeah. uh, thanks for inviting me to chat yeah, no, thank you as well. It, it was a real pleasure and a good luck with everything. And uh, tell Bradley that uh, he and I are good. Now. Brian, what's his last Brian name? Brian Whitmer. Whitmer. Yeah, Whitmer. I'll tell Brian Whitmer you say hi. I'll tell okay. Brian Whitmer your mom says hi. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Amy. Again, your honors premiere is streaming 13th of January and 15th uh, for Showtime only. Woohoo. Thank you very much. Check Amy. out Missing. In oh, and Missing as well is coming out soon. Yeah, <laughs> check that out too. All right. Well, okay. hopefully we get to chat again sometime. Be fun. All right. Sure. You have a good day. You too. Bye. Right, bye.